Night show? Yeah. All right, you're recording. Okay, you are? Uh, my name is Dale. And you had? And surgery. I had the surgery 14 months ago. Right. And I started at 320 pounds, and I am now at one, well, I've lost 130 pounds. But and most I, important. Uh, really, a big change. Uh, if you've been on the website, you see I'm on the, on the website now at my original weight, but right after I had the surgery. Right. And uh, I had miraculous things uh, happen right after the surgery, but it's even better now. Really? Even better now. Um, I'm no longer diabetic. I don't take blood pressure medicine. I don't take cholesterol medicine. Uh, I only take the vitamins. I am taking a lung medication that I have to continue taking for the rest of my life that uh, my pulmonologist said that I won't ever be able to get off of it through research. He's figured that out. Yeah, so, can I tell you, now, you, you know what I found out? What did you find out? Well, is it okay to say you have sure. pulmonary hypertension? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he has, Dale has pulmonary hypertension. That's one of the potential complications of being overweight, going with diabetes and high cholesterol, that over time, the right side of the heart, which pumps into the lungs, has a higher and higher pressure. It gets such high pressure that sometimes the right side of the heart can fail, and actually you can kind of lose your life from that. Now, they have a very expensive drug called Treclear, mm -hmm. and he's gotten much better since the surgery, but when his pulmonary specialist talked to all the other doctors in the world, no one has ever gotten better and been able to come off the Treclear. So all the other doctors told him that he can't come off Right. So, but my lung pressure has improved. It used to run 55, and now it's 32. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, but I, in fact, my last two regular doctor's checkups have been canceled because he didn't need to see me. I had my blood work done and all my vitamin levels, uh, everything was perfect. He's just, they called me up and said, we don't need to see you, you're doing fine. Just make another appointment three months from now and we'll check it again. If I don't need to see you, I won't need to see you. So now I, I had doctor's appointments every three months with my pulmonologist, cardiologist, and my regular general practitioner. And I don't have to see any of them anymore. Now, Dr. Pinto told so. me another story. He said that they would do a walk test. Yes. In other words, they bring you into the pulmonary clinic and they walk to see how far you can walk because it's a good measure of how your lungs are. And before surgery, uh, the, my oxygen level would drop down to 80, 82, and uh, now I'm doing the walk and it's staying at 96 better than I am when I'm resting. So I'm, I'm doing that much better. I'm, it's just fantastic. I mean, I could tell a difference immediately after I had the surgery, but uh, now that it's been 14 months out, I'm working out four times a, day, a week in the gym and I can walk uh, five miles. And uh, I couldn't even, if I had, had not had this surgery, I would not have been here tonight because I wouldn't have made those stairs. My lips would have turned I'm blue. I'm sorry, I apologize. My lips would have turned blue and I couldn't be up here. So there's no you, way. You actually, when you walk through this door right here, that there's no stairs. It's that you walk right over right here and then you're on the little ramp. A ramp, good. But I made it no problem today. So I'm just thrilled to death. I would do it over again in a minute. I had no complications, whatever. The only thing I find now is that I cannot uh, drink any kind of liquid once I eat. I have to wait about an hour, and then I can drink all that I want after that. But um, I can't drink anything when I eat. I've been able to eat everything and anything I want to eat. How long did so, you stay in the hospital? Uh, I was in, uh, I had surgery early one morning. I was there all that night, and then I was released like 1 o'clock in the afternoon the next day. Even and uh, and uh, I did very very well. Had no, I I was up right after the surgery and walking and walking the halls, and they couldn't tie me down. I felt great. I mean, I laughed because before I had surgery, I had what everybody calls cankles, no ankles, just calves and ankles together. Right after the surgery, I looked uncovered. I, I have ankles. I actually have them, and it's been great. It's been wonderful. About medicines you're taking or the supplements? Uh, or no, I'm down. Oh, I was taking 23 medications, well, 13 different medications a day, and I'm down to now two. Good, good. You taking your vitamins? Yes. How about the creatine? The creatine. I had a problem with the powdered creatine. I could not take it. Within a half hour after taking the powdered creatine, I would have to run to the restroom. 
but I, I found the pills. You right, suggested the capsules, the capsules yeah. and no problem. Good. Okay. Good. Sure. It won't help, but I, I don't mind doing it. Okay. So I guess we're getting a question from, we have uh, uh, three people watching the, the, today. <laughs> uh, so one of the questions is, could we operate as a revision and just narrow the, and snug up the pouch? And the answer is sure. Sure. Um, it turns out that we've been doing this surgery now for over 10 years. About two or three years into our practice, we got our first patients back who wanted to, to lose more because they hadn't lost enough. And so we trimmed and snugged up and narrowed their stomach and bypassed an additional three feet, and they didn't lose any weight. So if someone said, you know, I will pay you $17,000 to snug up my stomach, I, I'll do that if you want, but it's not going to get much weight loss. So that was a question from one of our, uh, from Kim. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Does it make sense to me? Um, you mean that if I snug because, up? Because because you said you can come for a revision. Yes. And then have ongoing weight loss, but that particular revision wouldn't do it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. In other words, um, obesity is a very very powerful adversary. The reason that so many other weight loss surgeries fail, just as an example, let me report to you that from a hospital in Switzerland where they have done over 500 lap bands, they project every single one of the bands will have failed by 10 years. So 100% failure rate is what they're predicting and that's what they're seeing. A study just published from Austria, from Innsbruck, and Europe as you may not know, had the ban for 10 years longer than us. So in Innsbruck, Austria, they're seeing about a 50% ban failure at five years. So five years, 50%, 10 years, 100%. Now this is not really so much a criticism of the band, in my way of thinking, because the band, you know, tries its best, but the band is going up against this very powerful adversary, obesity. So people will call me, for example, and we've had several people say they want the sleeve gastrectomy. And I've said, sure, I'll do that. But it doesn't work very well. Um, the lap band is very simple and very safe and very easy to do. It just doesn't work very well. The mini gastric bypass uses a very powerful combination. And when you do a revision, what we found from direct experience is you have to do a lot more if you want some additional weight loss. So um, what we have found is you have to bypass another three, four, five, six feet of bowel and snug the stomach to even get 30 to 50 pounds more weight loss. And the reason is the gut is designed to be very effective to digest fat and calories. And it's, it does so so well at that, that a revision to be effective needs to be quite powerful. Okay. Um, you want to be on TV? Sure. Do you mind? No. Yeah, you can tell your sister. All right, come on up. 